Seguimos en el Mobile World Congress eh, con la cobertura de los vídeos y esta vez nos acompaña Shikrant Shenwai de una asociación que se llama el Wireless Broadband Alliance, que como ven estamos eh, de asociaciones en el día de hoy, así que le voy a dar la bienvenida en inglés, como saben casi todos los vídeos son en inglés, para que nos cuente un poquito más qué está haciendo la asociación en este congreso. Welcome to Telesemana. Thank you. Tell us what is the alliance announcing here, or what is your message, uh, or actually, perhaps we could step backwards and tell us who you are, uh, your, your alliance, what, what does it do, what is your role, and then we can go for the announcements. Sure. Uh, well, this, is, this organization is called Wireless Broadband Alliance, in mm -hmm. short, we call it WBA. Yep. Uh, basically, it's an organization that was started by large carriers, all focused on Wi-Fi as a strategic uh, complement to their network services. Mm -hmm. Uh, the founding members have been companies like British Telecom, Dutch Telecom, Entity Communications. So operators mostly. Operators, mostly operators. Okay. All looking at, this was way back in 2003 when Wi-Fi was early, but still they were look, looking at how do you, in time to come and we have 3G and Wi-Fi and everything, how do you make the user experience work better? How do you yeah. make the connectivity experience work better? And that's what the Alliance was started for. It still is an operator-led organization and we are basically focused on driving next generation Wi-Fi experience so that when it comes to uh, consumers with all these wonderful devices that you and me carry now yeah. and you want to connect to Wi-Fi, the experience can be as simple and as easy as you have in the cellular world. Yeah. So those are the kind of activities that we help the ecosystem and the industry to make sure that can be done on a consistent basis across different carriers in the home markets or in roaming environment as well. Okay, are you in any way cooperating with the Wi-Fi Alliance because it, you know when you talk to Wi-Fi it sounds like the Wi-Fi Alliance uh, is already starting to do it, it wasn't supposed to to be their role it seems uh, because they were doing more certification on the technology but it seems as operators are demanding more and more the integration of Wi-Fi within their macro networks uh, it seems that the Wi-Fi Alliance is also trying to develop hotspot 2.0 so on so what's your relationship with that alliance if any It's, it's a very good question. In fact, we have a very strong relationship with Wi-Fi Alliance. We work very closely together as two organizations because what we do and what they do is a perfect complement. Where Wi-Fi Alliance always has been focused on is when it comes to devices, equipment, how do you make sure that they are interoperable? Mm -hmm. Their technology standards follow, they are all certified. Mm -hmm. That's what they do and that's what they're doing even now. So you mentioned this program, Hotspotter.org, that's what it is all about, developing certain mm -hmm. capabilities for equipment and at the device level. Okay. Where WBA focuses, because we're an operator organization, we look at operator requirement. It's good to have equipment which follows certain capabilities, but then how do you provide end-to-end -end capabilities? How do you make sure the service works from one operator to the other operator, one customer to the other customer, one device to the other device? Okay. How does the service work? So those are the areas WBA Next Generation Hotspot Program looks at making the equipment which are going to come out of this certification program from Hotspot to Dato work in real life, work across operators, interoperability amongst operators, user experience amongst operators, those are the areas we focus on. Okay, so tell us how far are we in terms of uh, allowing operators to offer the, the subscriber a solution by which I might be running on the street or walking on the street on my phone, entering a coffee shop, there is a hotspot from the operator and suddenly my call reconnects to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, offloading the macro cell. How far are we from that being secure, seamless, easy? Fantastic question. I think technically, if you ask me, we are there today. We are there today? Technically, we are there today. In okay. fact, that's what the Next Generation Hotspot Trial Program that we did last year, and we just announced, you asked me earlier about announcement. Okay, that's so we in fact just announced before this event a successful completion of that trial. And that trial essentially was a lot of carriers, about 23 companies, including large operators, both from mobile space as well as fixed Six. space, yeah. and the device vendors, the infrastructure operator providers like Cisco, Bell Air, those sort of companies, as well as the hub providers, the interconnect companies who provide between carriers interconnections. Okay. So they all work together to test out the capabilities which are required for the seamless connectivity, secure connectivity, network discovery and selection, So those are the capabilities which were being put together under the program on hotspot.o and on the NGH, we tested them. Tested them in a real environment, does it work? Okay. And I'm happy to share with you the results have been absolutely successful. Okay. Across all operators, all device vendors who worked in this, it's been successful. So technically, it's there. Okay. Now obviously the question is Now commercial requirements. Okay. How do you make it then commercially available? And of course there are these still 
work in progress where the certification has to complete. Once they are done, the equipment will become available on a commercial basis and will get rolled out. Okay, so let me re rephrase the question. When are going to be, how, long, how far are we into the certification and how far are we from commercial launches? Well, I'm sure you can probably get more clear answer on the certification from Wi-Fi lines, okay. but as our understanding is, they are in the process of launching that uh, uh, program soon. And from our understanding, what we are hearing from operators is, within the next 12 months, you will start to see operators rolling out these capabilities, uh, perhaps in maybe certain specific areas that they think is more important to deploy them, but certainly within the next 12 months, we'll start seeing an early deployment. And uh, who knows, it might be in fact much faster than that. Okay, let, let me ask you this question, because we're seeing the emergence of some greenfield operators in Latin America. For example, we have UNE in Colombia, they're gonna be launching uh, a greenfield LTE operator. We're seeing BTR in, in Chile, they're gonna just launch their, their 3G network. And it seems to me like they should be planning their micro networks with Wi-Fi into the equation from the beginning. I don't know if that's reasonable, that's feasible, and that's something that you would advise that from now on, a new operator that starts from zero, from scratch, Wi-Fi needs to be a part of their planning. I would, I would say more than reasonable and feasible. It, feasible, it is an imperative that they do that. Okay. Uh, regardless of what technology you use for license spectrum, it's a license spectrum. There's always going to be a cost attached to that spectrum. There's so much you can keep filling those pipes regardless of what technology it is, whether it's LT in time to come. Mm -hmm. And most operators today are, have started beginning to, how do I put it as part of my radio access architecture? It's not just about whether it's 3G today or 4G or LT tomorrow. How do I make sure, given a particular site, I provide the best connectivity experience? And Wi-Fi is definitely has to be part of that because Users like you and I use these devices on Wi-Fi. Yep. So you have to make sure that you are able to connect to Wi-Fi so that customers get that experience that they need depending on where they are. Okay. Who do you think this is a better opportunity for? Fixed operator or mobile operators? That's the amazing part about WBA. In fact, right from the beginning of WBA, we always had a very interesting mix of operators in WBA. Yeah. And we, in fact, today we have large Fixed carriers, incumbents like British Telecom, NTT Communication. We have integrated operators like AT&T, Dodge Telecom, Orange Group. But we also have pure Wi-Fi players. We even have cable companies and companies who are doing WiMAX. And for example, in Japan, you have KDDI and KT in Korea. So they are still looking at Wi-Fi as an important part of their mix. So it is relevant to all operators, regardless of what wireless services you're providing, you need to look at Wi-Fi. You can't avoid that because that's what customers like you and me are carrying today. Okay, let me ask you in a different way. Right. Who do you think are going to be launching first these services? Why, uh, fixed operators or mobile operators? Again, the answer is it depends who you are. But okay. uh, we have already, in a, uh, for example, in visibility of a cable operator who has started deploying the generation hotspot capabilities on okay. wi uh, using Wi-Fi. Uh, there is integrated operators who are in the trial and they are in the process of now looking at commercial deployment. So it's it's. It again depends on operator or operator. Some people who have greater pain points and much more need to address these data requirements or are more focused on using the opportunity will go first. It doesn't matter whether they're cable or a fixed company.